So I was re-watching the Deadpool Comic Con footage earlier, and I realized it actually shows us a lot more than the potentially awesome movie that we're about to get next year. Seriously, watch a trailer if you haven't seen it already. It's amazing. The trailer actually builds on what we know about the new X-Men Cinematic Universe timeline and gives us a better look at Deadpool's place in said timeline. By the way, if you need a refresher on the whole thing, I put a link to my website in the description below where you can find a handy chart about the whole timeline. Anyway, that having been said, here are the five things we've learned from the Deadpool trailer. Number one. Wade's life is completely different. In X-Men Origins, Wade mentions whipping out a couple of swords at his ex-girlfriend's wedding. Now in the original timeline, based on that throwaway line, we can probably infer that something happened to the two of them that caused them to split up. It's possible that due to Wolverine messing with the timeline in Days of Future Past, Wade and his girlfriend worked things out or never broke up in the first place, based on the fact that the footage shows the two of them still together. Not to mention the fact he's also wearing combat fatigues in the trailer, suggesting he might have been in the military rather than going to Weapon X. Number two, Wade's Weapon X time is completely different. In the original timeline, Wade joined in the 1970s and fought alongside mutants like Wolverine and Sabretooth. However, in this timeline, it's possible that this happens due to Stryker, now Mystique in disguise, never putting a plan in motion or searching anyone else out. Number three, at least a majority of the footage takes place in the present, 2015. Aside from the various cars we can see on the road throughout the footage, most of which are probably more present day cars, the biggest hints for this part come in the form of Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Warhead's name alone will jump the film a decade ahead of the upcoming X-Men Apocalypse, which is set in the 80s. The song, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, came out in the 90s. Colossus's uniform is reminiscent of the costume from X-Men The Last Stand, set in 2006, which we know from one of the viral sites. I'll also put a link for that in the description below. It's reasonable to think that even if the events of The Last Stand never happened, he would still have a similar enough costume by this point in time. If you want some proof, just look at the costume from The Last Stand, compare it to this one in Deadpool, and compare that to the one that we see in the future in Days of Future Past. In Days of Future Past, the future Colossus has the plain uniform with covered shoulders. However, in The Last Stand and in Deadpool, we see that his shoulders are bare and we see an X pattern on both his belt buckle and on the vest part. Number four, Wolverine gave Wade cancer. In the original timeline, we never really learned why Wade wanted to join up with the special team Striker had planned. However, we can probably infer it had nothing to do with cancer, seeing as it's never brought up, Wade doesn't seem to be all that concerned with his imminent death. However, in the new timeline, we see Wade talking with Weasel covered in various tumors. This would mean that if Wade truly didn't have cancer in the original timeline, then something Wolverine did gave him cancer in the first place. That's really messed up, actually. Number five, Wade is not a mutant anymore. In the original timeline, Wade is a mutant with some kind of weird powers that help him kill people. It's not really explained. All we really know is that he's able to bounce bullets off his sword. However, in the Comic-Con footage, it's said that they, presumably Weapon X, can give Wade powers and, quote, make him a superhero. Ergo, he was not born with powers in the new timeline and is not a mutant. Alright, well thanks everybody. Be sure to like, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed all this, be sure to go back and check out my website, comicsversusworld.wordpress.com. Or go ahead and follow me on Twitter, that's at Comics vs. World. Also go ahead and send some love to the Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash comics vs. World. And I'll be sure to see you guys next time. Later.